Well, good morning and welcome back to Log Cabin Firewood. My name is Jack and thanks for stopping by. Today on the channel, we are going to talk about the installation of my thermal pecs and me running conduit to get ready for this central boiler 760 HDX that we're going to get in a couple weeks. Stick around. Yeah, I know we're a firewood channel, but what we're doing right now is getting ready so that we can heat our home more efficiently and heat our hot water with this uh, outdoor wood boiler. So right now we are prepping to get this thermal pex where it needs to be. I got to put a piece of rebar down there and I'm just going to run some duct tape around it. And then I also have to run conduit over there so the boiler has power. And we actually got the uh, thermal pex in yesterday. The dealer stopped by, came over on a huge roll, and we wheeled this stuff out and stuck it in the hole and then he actually talked me into running two pieces of conduit one to my shed for a home run and then one to the boiler as a home run because i was just going to put a t here and i'm not an electrician and i thought i could tee off you know two lines but he said nah pipes cheap enough just to run two direct home runs i'll show you over here where we stuck it in the wall so i've already got the uh thermal packs grouted in and I'm working on grouting in my uh, two pieces of inch and a half conduit right now and then I'm just going to backfill a little bit probably to the top of this thermal pex that way it has something to rest on and I can actually get some dirt around this pex. Hi Miss Veda. She's been coming down here and exploring the trench with me. But I'm going to go ahead and get you set up. I'm going to get this hole over here. Where are we at? I'm going to get this hole right here grouted up and uh, then we'll backfill a little bit, continue this pex, and we'll see how far we make it today. So here's the inside, and you can see where I uh, got this side grouted in yesterday. And then over here's what I'm working on now for my uh, two pieces of inch and a half conduit. I've got these stubbed in the wall about four inches, and I started grouting in the seat for these to set in. They're not perfectly level. They probably should be, but again, I'm not a plumber or an electrician. I am a just showing you how you can do this and I probably knocked both of these holes out with a Hilti gun with a uh, 5 8 bit on it. I probably did both of those holes in about 15 minutes. Uh, Mr. Tom, my dealer, did this one on the outside and then he handed me the drill and said here you have fun. So I went ahead and uh, punched the rest of this out and then uh, he, he handed me some grout and said here now grout it in. So let's get this finished. Then we'll go outside and we'll continue running some conduit. So I can say when you work with this quick, re quick setting cement or repair mortar, definitely work in small batches. This stuff sets up rather quick. And I did mix this up a little thin, a little thinner than I uh, typically like to do. But I did that. That way I have a little bit added working time. But just put little pieces in here until you fill your hole and then we'll go on the outside and i like to use my hands with this stuff but you should probably wear some gloves because you can get concrete burns this stuff does have the uh, rapid set i guess it's like almost straight portland cement which can burn you so uh definitely be mindful of that when using this stuff And this is why I like to use my hands because I can work this stuff where I want it to be. And this is still a little too thin for me, so we're going to wait a second until this temps up and then I'll continue uh, filling this hole. When you do this, you don't have to go crazy. The outside uh, is what you really want to, but you can see, I mean, I've probably got half my thumb in here that I'm filling up, so it might be an inch and a half. I think the uh, wall of the block is only about an inch. And then also, I don't know if you can see it, but up here, let's see here. Up here was my hole for my uh, old HVAC. I had that relocated to the other side of the house because out here on this wall that we're working on, I'm going to end up putting a concrete patio out here. And I didn't want to have my air conditioning sitting here blasting 
and making noise while I have guests over or I'm trying to relax from a hard day or weekend or whatever. But there we go. We got this uh, hole filled up. We'll let this set up a little bit, then I'll take my hard trowel and finish up the edges a little bit. So now that this has set up a little bit, I'm just going to take my trowel and I'll go along the wall and I'll get any excess off of the wall that doesn't need to be there because I want this to be as flush as possible. And I did dry lock my basement wall, which I do have extra. I will come back and dry lock this around so you won't see the mortar, but uh, that might be, you know, a couple days from now. But just kind of put your trowel on there, put some pressure on it. Go around and clean up your edges. And that's pretty much it. So now we are outside. I got a little bit of my mud mixed up because I patched this hole on the inside, which I'm probably going to remove this stuff. This is what my uh, HVAC guy put in here. That's all he had on his truck. I'll probably throw some of this mortar in there. We'll see. We'll see how much I have left. But again, I like to use my hands, so we're going to use my hands and get this filled up. And you want to make sure you get a good seal around the bottom. So I'm kind of lifting this side up a little bit. Don't go crazy with it because you just mortared the stuff on the inside and it's still a little bit soft. But I'm putting about an inch underneath of the pipe and then I'm just kind of pushing, letting the pipe naturally fall into it. And that'll ensure that I have a good seal around it. Now we'll have to go mix up a little bit more because I want to bring this out flush just to ensure that this is sealed up. So I went ahead and pulled this uh, caulk off of this over here. Because I don't think it looks good at all. And this repair mortar is not going to dry as white as the mortar on my parge job. But at least it looks like concrete and not a bunch of crappy caulk. Now my new concrete pad's probably gonna go to here because I might pour it underneath, like right underneath my uh, door sill there. So it might actually be covered after I finish this. And again, I like to use my hands. I think that looks a lot better than that gray caulk. What do you think? So we got everything uh, mortared in and I went through and backfilled a little bit about two feet away from the house. I need to let that mortar set and then I am going to put some uh, tar or roofing cement around those openings just to ensure nothing gets in there. But uh, I went ahead and backfilled this little corner by hand. I just called the neighbor to see if I could borrow his excavator for about an hour because I do want to put maybe a foot in this hole and then continue running my conduit. That way it just stays flat, nice and flat. But I'm going to go ahead and hook these corners up. I'm waiting on a call back from him. So uh, let's go ahead and get this together. So I need to get the excavator up to here so I can start sprinkling some stuff in here. And I could go down and around and come back up through here and start pushing, but that's no fun. Let's see if I can't put a little bit in here and still keep it, you know, low enough to where my conduit is uh, good enough and I'll crawl over this thing.
Well, that actually went a little bit better than I thought, and my father-in-law pulled in the driveway while I was doing it, so I had to make sure I did it right. Well, there is that. My six inch drain, the inch and a half conduit, and the thermal pex. This is where the boiler is going to go. And there are my two downspouts that'll be daylighted back here. I still have to do a little bit of finish grading. I might go get the skid loader and uh, try and finish this off. The tracking's off on his skid loader a little bit next door. It's probably something I could make a video about repairing because I've seen, uh, a couple people on YouTube repair it on these Bobcats and it doesn't seem that hard. It just seems a little tedious. Now I'm going to backfill probably three feet away from where I have stopped this pipe. And then I will come up here and get this graded. I need to dig a little trench to the shed and then I will have to tunnel underneath this six by six, move my stone out of the way. And then I have a two inch uh, hole saw that I'm going to run this up into there in between this corner and that's where the fuse box will go in the shed. So we are still progressing on here. I dug a little bit more trench to connect the line to my shed. Uh, I had to trench underneath of my six by sixes 
And then I had to get the hole saw in here and drill a hole here through all that. And this will be where the breaker box will go for in here. Not that there's gonna be very many circuits on here, but I want this to have its own dedicated shut off because I do want to put some GFIs out here. And the only thing that I forgot is that I really wanted to run a water line out here, um, at least to the shed. I might end up digging something up and putting it on the corner of the house later on in life. I don't know. Um, where my water spigots are now is kind of annoying. But let's go ahead and get the last 20 feet. I don't know, it's probably like 22-ish feet put in here. And we'll get back filled because it's gonna rain tonight. Well, here we go. I got all the conduit ran to the shed. I had to cut a little piece here because when I connected this piece into the elbow, it was a little bit short. So I said, nope, we're not doing that. I went ahead and broke it back here and just, I had a couple fittings. So we just put a little joint in there. And then uh, we're duct taped off in here and ready for electric. But it's been a fun few hours. I am going to get the rest of this backfilled um, and just you know semi grade it off because I am going to be prepping for concrete here soon. Well, there you have it. I still have a good bit of fine tuning left, but for the most part, I beat the rain. I got my hole covered back up. Uh, let's see, I dug this hole on Sunday. It is now Wednesday, so it stayed open for four days and uh, God's blessed me with no rain. Uh, I'm still going to let this dry and then I'll use what little bit of dirt here and uh, backfill that tomorrow and then I'm going to tar I'm going to tar that and then backfill it. Uh, that there I just need to do a little bit of a uh, shovel work and I'm going to end up taking out these azaleas because like I said this is all going to be concrete. I'm probably going to come off the house six feet and pour a nice like lead walk into like a 12 by 12 area where I'm standing and this will all be concrete. We can have a little sitting area down below our uh, jungle up here but that's going to be it for today guys hopefully you can understand what it takes to put in your thermal pecs it's really not that hard at all all it involves is digging a trench laying your pipe in the trench punching a hole through your wall grouting it in and then backfilling oh and you got to run a piece of conduit if you really want to unless you could find ground rated cable which i'm sure they make it but sometimes it's easier just to run conduit. Um, but you got to run power to your boiler as well. Um, so yeah, piece of conduit, a trench, your thermal packs, backfill, you're done. Um, but I hope everybody has a great rest of your week. Uh, have a great weekend and stay safe. Take care of each other. And I will see you next Saturday at 6.30 a.m. Thank you so much for watching.